Okay, our final, uh, our final presentation today is a panel uh, ad addressing uh, aftercare, and it will be, uh, be conducted by Mr. Mike Ziegler, who's Executive Director of the NTR Safety and Integrity Alliance, and also of Thoroughbred Aftercare. Mike, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks for the Jockey Club and Grayson for putting on this great event, um, and everybody who put in the hard work here, and thank you, Keeneland, for hosting. Aftercare is front of mind for people, which to me is a victory. Um, when I first started working for the NTRA Safety and Integrity Alliance in 2008, there was a lot of it's not our problem going on around the uh, the industry, and I'm happy to say that I believe that everybody has accepted the fact that taking care of our horses when their careers are over has now become everybody's responsibility. And as a result, I think um, the stars aligned, the, the industry is beginning to work together towards, I guess, addressing, solving is a lot bigger of, a, of an answer, but addressing the issue. and. The first thing that we're gonna talk about here today is one component of that, which is the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance, which is a group of uh, an organization that was started out of a TCA board meeting about 18 months ago where somebody asked the question of why are we not solving the financial aspect of aftercare on a national level? And as a result of that conversation, a group of like-minded individuals got together last June in New York and started talking about how, as an industry, we can get together to fund the organizations that care for our horses when their careers are over. So, Shannon, if you can start the... Oh, is it here? Okay. Oh, there it is. Um, so here we are. Why was the TAA formed? It was formed because there was a, a dearth of... Uh, national addressing of the issues. And TAA's mission coming out of the gate didn't actually start with funding. It started with the fact that we wanted to serve as an accrediting body. And that's where, where I got involved because I was running the accreditation program for the tracks. And we, we realized quickly that if we're ever going to um, provide funding for organizations, we needed to make sure that the horses under the care of these organizations were being cared for in a humane way. And then additionally, we're gonna serve as a fundraising body and help raise monies needed that these facilities will use to care for horses. Initially, we received uh, seed money at TAA from the Jockey Club Breeders' Cup in Keeneland. And we have a board made up of people who represent all different aspects of the industry. Adina Springs has a representation, or uh, the Stronic Group, Karma from California, TCA, um, NYFA, we've had lots of meetings with Fasig Tipton, the Jockeys Guild, all kinds, all kinds of people pledged their support to the organization from the get-go, which to me helped move it along. So here we are, there's an accrediting body, it's a two-step process. Uh, facilities need to adhere to a code of standards, and once they meet those standards, they fill out an application and we provide an inspection. They need to be an accredited organization in order to receive grants in the long run from TAA. So here's what the Code of Standards covers. Um, operations, education, horse health care management, the crux of it is facility standards and services, and adoption policies and protocols. Under operations, uh, governments and program operations are the foundation of a thoroughbred aftercare organization. Accredited organizations must demonstrate operational stability, financial transparency, sound and ethical business practices, responsible use of resources, and adherence to federal, state, and local laws. They need to be a 501c3, tax-exempt status. They need to be in business for three years. Similarly, they need to have demonstrate that they um, have insurance and that they have uh, either ownership or lease of their property, and they have to have board of directors that are somewhat independent and show us, demonstrate to us that they are having regular meetings and um, communicating with their board. They have to adhere to G generally accepted accounting principles and banking procedures, and we need to make sure that they're financially stable. Uh, when they fundraise, we need to make sure that their fundraisers are um, 
doing the right thing, not generally making money and not losing money. We need to make sure that they have a sufficient number of volunteers or staff to ensure the proper running of the program. Next, this is to me one of the most important areas. It's education, and I'm gonna read this. How aftercare organizations educate the public, media, regulators, community officials, law enforcement personnel, legislators, regulators, and others about humane care of thoroughbreds greatly affect not only the aftercare community, but the racing industry as a whole. Whenever possible, accredited organizations should work cooperatively with the thoroughbred racing community to share media resources and increase public awareness of thoroughbred aftercare to uphold the image and integrity of the horse racing industry. Very important. So we need to promote humane thoroughbred aftercare through education. We need to, these organizations need to market what they're doing, show the industry in the, in the correct limelight, and um, be regularly in front of the media to show what they're doing is, is working. Horse health care management. Um, all facilities, including foster farms that the organization might oversee, shall provide necessary care. And they need to have procedures in place to ensure that competent personnel, including staff, volunteers, and veterinarians, oversee the facility's horse care. We need the organizations to let us know exactly what type of horses are coming in, if, they're, if there's a quarantine area, those types of things upon arrival and, and triage to make sure that the horses are um, put to the right place immediately. Feed, forage, and water, those are no-brainers. Foot care is important. Another important aspect is that the organization needs to have a written euthanasia policy that's consistent with that of the AAP. We'd like to see that demonstration, not, we don't wanna see a demonstration, we wanna see uh, app, uh, documentation that it's been applied. We wanna make sure that stallions are gelded and uh, make sure that there's deworming and vaccination in place. Obviously, facilities are gonna be different based on the type of horse care that they're providing, so it's gonna be based on a site inspection as to what we wanna look, see the facility look like, if it's um, a function of uh, pasture only or stall space, we just need to look at it on a unique individual basis. Shelter, run in stalls need to be um, safe and functional. When we're gonna look at fencing, we're gonna look at acreage per horse, and we're gonna look at um, guidelines for evaluating the uh, opportunities for a horse for retraining and adoption. And again, uh, adoption protocols are very important. We, we can't take care of all the horses in, in pasture for the rest of their lives. We, we need to have a program and, and in, incentivize these organizations to have horses retrained and adopted in order to move more horses through the system. So standards are in place, application's the next step. It's pretty lengthy, it's pretty in-depth. Every organization will have to fill out a, a application for each of the facilities that they oversee. And basically what we wanna see is that in writing, they want to, we wanna demonstrate that they're adhering to this code of standards that we just went through. And then the next step, once we have an application in place is we'll have an accreditation site inspection. And we've been fortunate enough to have cooperation from the AAEP who is gonna introduce us to veterinarians on a regional basis who will be able to help us inspect the sites and not incur a lot of costs by having travel expenses in place. Um, that's one of the, the major motivating factors behind the, the TAA is to keep administrative costs down. And we're able to do that by utilizing the resources in place of organizations like Jockey Club, NTRA, and the AAP veterinarians on a regional basis. A lot of the work that's been done so far has been pro bono by people on our board. So the next big step is the TAA is a fundraising body, which once the accreditation standards were in place, we started working really hard on that. And, and I will read a quote from TAA board president Jack Wolf, who said, it's our responsibility as owners, tracks, breeders, trainers, jockeys, bloodstock agents, and anyone who has a stake in the game to, stick, to take responsibility for the aftercare of these great animals, that are the keystone of our sport. That's, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Um, we're gonna raise funds for these accredited facilities via institutional contributions as opposed to uh, having you know, regular fundraisers. We don't wanna supplant any of those regular fundraisers. We can't support all the horses without continuing the programs that are, that are actually working out there right now. 
but it, we're working on these automatic contributions from every touch point in the horse's life, which includes the stallion owners, the breeders, the sales companies, consigners and buyers at sales, the owners, trainers, jockeys, tracks, and the breed registries. Basically, in a nutshell, many hands make light work. So a small percentage of a lot of different contributions or a lot of, bit of, a lot of different transactions can help raise a lot of money to care for these horses. We never want to be overly onerous on any aspect of the industry, but we want all the industry to participate. So many of you might have read last week that we made an announcement of funding participation, uh, the initial funding participation. 13 of the top farms in Kentucky agreed to contribute the equivalent of a quarter of one stallion season yearly. Um, the Jockey Club made a tremendous announcement that uh, registry-related um, registry related fees are going to be increased by $25, and all that money going towards retired horses. The sales companies, Keeneland, Phasic Tipton, uh, OBS, and, and Barrett's agreed to five one-hundredths of a percent of a um, added fee to all transactions through the sales ring, and they're, with the caveat that uh, uh, participants can opt out if they wish. I talked about the Jockeys Club. One of the neat things that we've established is we're working with Breeders' Cup on a fan participation program where throughout the uh, Friday and Saturday Breeders' Cup event, you'll see a lot of, of opportunity to text to pledge. So you send a text message, fund TAA to, I think, 56325, and you'll get back a link in order to um, basically use your credit card and send a donation. So it's our opportunity to get the fans participating, which is a key aspect. So the Stronic Group tracks in California and Florida are contributing to organizations that will be con uh, that will be accredited by TAA. And similarly, the horsemen in California have a three tenths of a percent withholding on their earnings through the paymaster purses, and that money will go to accredited organizations. Moving forward, the success of TA depends on further development of the funding mechanism. We can't stop where we are right now. We need to talk to the stallion owners and breeders in other states. We need to talk to racetracks and, and jockeys and owners and trainers. We need to continue to work on a, on a shoestring budget. Um, I think there's a lot of great organizations around the industry that can help us we need to take advantage of existing resources as opposed to re reinventing the wheel. And, and further, we, we can't survive without the existing programs that are in place. The, there's a lot of great organizations around the country that are already taking care of a lot of horses. There's a lot of great funding mechanisms. There's track programs. All of these things need to continue to operate. Otherwise, again, it's an overburden for any individual organization. Uh, we also need to increase the demand for the thoroughbred. We, we need to work with uh, institutions like USEF that understand that the thoroughbred horse is capable of doing a lot of things, and we need to work towards that, and that's a lot what Kristen's working on in Stewart. So if I'm going to leave with this point, and it's, a, it's a, one of my favorite quotes in these days, and it's basically, the greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated. And I think the people behind the TAA represent that we're starting to do the right thing here, or continuing to do the right thing here. So thank you very much for your time this morning, and I'm going to turn it over to Kristen.